Bone conduction has been around for nearly 400 years. It was first discovered by Girolamo Cardano, physician who described how to transmit sounds by means of a rod. Since then, bone conduction has gone a long way, continuously evolving to solve some hearing impairments related to the pina and tympanic membrane. This technique was even used by Beethoven in the early 19th century and is thought by some to have been conceived by the composer. It allowed him to keep hearing music while he was deaf, which helped him compose his last pieces such as the Ninth Symphony. First off, we need to understand how bone conduction works. Normally, sound waves travel into the ear canal until they reach the eardrum. The eardrum passes the vibrations through the middle ear bones into the inner ear or cochlea. Inside the cochlea, there are thousands of tiny hair cells that change the vibrations into electrical signals sent to the brain through the hearing nerve. On the other hand, bone conduction bypasses the eardrums. In bone conduction listening, the device performs the role of the eardrum, decoding the sound waves and converting them into vibrations that can be received directly by the cochlea, so the eardrum is never involved. In order to build the bone conduction device, we will be using a piezoelectric connected in series with an amplifier powered by a 15 volt source in order to power the electronics. The amplifier is added to amplify the input signal and deliver a higher voltage to the piezo, thus allowing wider vibrations. The amplifying circuit is a typical circuit used for the LM1875 amplifier. The amplifier is stable for closed loop gain of 10 and above. The use of a heat sink is recommended as the LM1875 usually heats up quickly, which might affect the performance of the amplifier. This amplifier consists of a biasing circuit for the LM1875 and coupling capacitors at the input in order to get rid of the DC component and get a better amplification. We need to check the circuit for discontinuities, check the output impedance of the circuit and test the amplifier. This circuit was tested using a 4 ohm speaker as low. Using the soldering iron, we were able to connect wires to the piezo electric and test its sounds and functionalities. Connecting the piezo to a function generator and using different amplitudes and frequencies resulted in many tones and volumes of the sound generated. We then needed to connect the circuit, we placed the piezo at the output, 14 and minus 14 volts for VCC plus and VCC minus to power the amplifier, and the sound source at the input. And now for the demo. Please don't make any sudden moves. You don't know the half of the This is how it was made. 